The next research method to discuss is the survey technique. This should be familiar to everyone because I'm sure you have responded to surveys in magazines or online, although those were probably not very scientific or designed systematically. But you are familiar with the technique where you get a questionnaire in some form and you respond as well as you can to the items on the questionnaire. I want to tell you about what is probably one of the most famous surveys conducted in the history of psychology, and that is the Kinsey Survey, published in 1948 with a follow-up in 1953 regarding human sexuality. In fact, the Kinsey study was one of the first systematic scientific studies of human sexual behavior. Basically, Kinsey collected data from a large number of participants. Some people were interviewed in person, which I think is probably not the most well-controlled technique. If someone is being asked some very personal questions, then they are not likely to always be truthful in their answers. So the majority of participants were contacted through the mail and they received questionnaires in the mail and it was hoped that they would respond to the items on the questionnaire honestly and openly and mail it back to the researchers. The Kinsey study involved questions about people's extramarital affairs, premarital affairs, uh, many, many embarrassing questions. I'm pretty sure that you're aware that sex was a very taboo topic back in the 40s and the 1950s, more so than it is today. The Kinsey research was a very important study in our history. Basically, it provided evidence that human sexual behavior is much more diverse than was originally assumed. It also led to suggestions that Sexual orientation is not just an either-or phenomenon, that in fact it can be viewed as occurring along a continuum so that you have some people who are extremely homosexual and at the other extreme you have people that are extremely heterosexual. And when you take into account people's behavior and their fantasies and their thought patterns, that most people probably fall somewhere between those two extremes. That's one way of looking at it and that perspective and others came from the Kinsey study. So Kinsey and his colleagues collected enormous amounts of data. Ultimately they had an N number of participants of more than 20,000 people. That's huge. I've conducted studies where I've had 300, 400, 500 participants. 20,000 is really impressive and if you think about it, knowing what you know already, Having that many participants means that you are increasing external validity or the likelihood that that sample of data that they collected is representative of everybody in the United States. But was this a perfect study and was external validity really that high? You can question it. Basically, if you think about the people that received this questionnaire with all these personal questions in the mail, who would respond to this and who would not respond to this? Are you including everybody in your sample of participants? I often think of my mother who was an adult in the 40s and 50s and what would have happened if she received this questionnaire in the mail. I'm pretty sure she would not have responded. She would have ripped it up into very small pieces and hope nobody else saw it because it would embarrass her. So this may be a biased sample of participants. Does this mean that it was a bad study or that we should not give any kind of credibility to the results? No, it just means that it's a step forward in science and that we are well aware that there may have been some degree of bias in the sample of participants. Now let's consider internal validity. Here, again, you're looking at whether or not the data collected by the researchers is credible whether or not variables were controlled, whether or not you can believe what was actually found during observations of those specific participants inside the research study. So were people able to accurately report about their own behavior? It was, after all, a questionnaire that asked them very personal questions about their sexuality. Were the participants truthful? There are ways to design questionnaires to determine whether or not people are being self-serving as they answer questions 
or if they are being deceptive or not paying attention closely to the questions on the questionnaire. But generally speaking, do you think that people are going to be able to honestly and truthfully answer every question about their own sexual thoughts and sexual behaviors? Question this a little bit. We're not always aware of our own behavior. Our memories are somewhat flawed. And so, again, you have to be a little bit skeptical of the results of this study and question internal validity as well as external validity. But generally speaking, the Kinsey study is much admired in the history of psychology. It was one of the first studies of its kind, and it taught us a great deal about ourselves.